So what are some of the most common mistakes when it comes to Islamic meditation, the proper practice of Zikrullah? Well, the first and most common mistake is a lack of proper understanding of how to practice Islamic meditation, how to practice Zikrullah in its most effective and efficient forms. Another mistake which is commonly made with Zikrullah, with Islamic meditation, is a lack of intent, a lack of consciousness, a lack of awareness. Oftentimes, when people practice Islamic meditation, when they make tasbih, or when they even make muraqaba, a lot of times it's unconscious, it's unaware, it's lacking the intent that can truly take that practice to a much more powerful experience. And really what we're talking about is a lack of presence, being distracted by the dunya, being distracted by the world of form, the world of appearances, and all of our obligations and duties and troubles and problems that come from dunya. Being distracted by that and then failing to get the very benefit what Islamic meditation was for to liberate us from that. And lastly, there's a lack of understanding of the purpose of Islamic meditation or the purpose of Islamic spirituality itself. Oftentimes we just practice these things unconsciously as an obligation, but we fail to understand what is its very purpose and how can I achieve that quicker? How can I experience that in this life before we reach the grave? So by failing to understand Islamic meditation, to learn how to practice it properly, we can ultimately fail at understanding the purpose of Islam. See, the Prophet said, one hour of contemplation is more valuable than 70 years of worship. In one of the previous videos, we spoke about the experience of Iblis and how he fell from grace and ultimately became labeled as Shaitan Rajim, the rejected, the cursed because of his rebellion. He worshiped physically, externally, for aeons, for ages, yet he didn't spend an hour in contemplation, an hour in meditation, to realize the very purpose of his physical spiritual practices, of his religious obligations. And hence, all of his religious obligations, all of his prostrations, instead of cultivating humility, gratitude, consciousness in his being and his soul, led him to pride and arrogance, and he fell. And that's the danger that we run into with Islamic practice. If we fail to address the internal dimension, the meditative dimension, the spiritual dimension of Islam, and only carry the physical dimension of Islam, we run the risk of entirely missing the very purpose of Islam. And one of the greatest dangers is that we can lose complete relevancy of Islam. We can lose Islam, God forbid, ultimately, and it just becomes a form, a part-time religion, like many other religions nowadays. Islam is relevant and it's designed to impact and affect and accentuate every aspect of our lives, every dimension of our lives.